I found a box at my door with a picture of me on it, triggering a memory of my first debut in the game industry back then. A man was challenging and enraging everyone from the silent crowd. I stepped up to the stage and easily defeated him in the game, earning loud cheers from the audience. However, my triumph was short-lived as I later contracted a mysterious disease that led to the loss of all my fame. I had even left the guild I had created. Determined to play again, I equipped myself with my gaming gear, full of regret about my past choices. Logging into the game, I was amazed by how advanced it had become. I created a new identity named Dusk. Just as I was about to start, red system lights began flashing, and a strange light appeared outside my apartment window then a strange demon appeared and granted me the necromancy swordsman class a system prompt stated, the zero hour has arrived, the game will start soon suddenly, a skeleton hand emerged from the ground the system informed me that I was in Corpse Ridge newbie village shocked and disappointed, I realized I looked like a skeleton a new prompt appeared village chief of corpse. Ridge newbie village, necromancer nigh when frightened, I saw someone shouting at me and started running away the system informed me that my backpack contained a set of newbie gear from the village chief of corpse Ridge newbie village in my arsenal, I found an iron sword and a shirt better than nothing I thought as I equipped them however, my attributes were disappointingly low. Suddenly, I heard a voice from behind, little skeleton, want to become stronger, the man continued, shouting, would you like some guidance from me? I do have some tricks up my sleeve. Covering myself, I responded, advice is welcome. But I won't sell myself out. Raising his staff, he replied, come accept the quest, since you've got no flesh to sell anyway a system prompt appeared, and I thought, very funny, old man, then I said, 20 rabbits should be easy for me now, right? I saw some level 2 and 3 rabbits eating carrots and launched a critical hit at them. I thought it was so easy until a level 3 rabbit charged at me. I raised my sword, predicting, it will appear at this spot in 3 seconds. Now's the perfect time to swing the sword, I slashed but missed, and the rabbit kicked me in the face, reducing my health by 15 points. Crying on the ground, I realized, I attacked 3 seconds early to compensate for the delay. Why did it fail? I tried attacking again but missed once more. The rabbit landed on my sword and started hitting me repeatedly. Counting the seconds, it finished with an uppercut, throwing me away with only 3 health points left. All 3 level 3 rabbits attacked again, and I respawned, thinking, I can't believe I was killed by a group of rabbits. Embarrassed, I muttered, I absolutely mustn't let Shersan and the others find out this is so embarrassing, then, feeling groggy, I said, weird. My head suddenly feels a bit groggy I always feel like I'm forgetting something thinking hard, I tried to recall, it seems like I can recall something a memory of a sports car crash and a bloody baseball bat flashed in my mind. Where was I born in the game and also Lord Guan Yu what's the connection between all that, I recalled the doctor saying, there's a probability your nerves will self repair could this be happening now. I should go to the hospital for a checkup when I have time. But for now, here I come, you little rascals. The system notified me, attack the big-eared rabbit's weak spot and its neck for a 50% damage bonus, I grinned at the little rabbits, hello there, little bunnies, and attacked, landing critical hits. The feeling of reduced delay is awesome, I laughed, suddenly, I saw a man flying towards me. I stopped him with my hand and thought, a player. How did he get beaten so badly, holding him with one hand, I said, here it comes. Before me stood the big-eared rabbit chief, a level 10 monster with 300 health. The muscular and short-tempered ruler of the carrot field threw a beaten player at me, but I countered effortlessly. I didn't see that coming. Swinging my arm, I declared, you guys can rest easy. I will avenge you. As they disappeared, I thought, this is the first time I'm facing a boss with reduced delays. I'm suddenly feeling excited. I gripped my sword tightly, noticing the rabbit had brass knuckles on. This is totally a gangster rabbit. I thought, trying to stay cool. The opponent is strong. I shouldn't make a move before he does. When he makes his move, then I'll make mine. The monster attacked swiftly, landing a hit that decreased my health by 25 points. Just by swinging his punch, he took off 25 of my HP. I attacked with a critical hit, but it only decreased his health by 5 points. Shocked, I thought, a critical hit and it only dealt 5 damage. I jumped and exclaimed, could this rabbit be wearing armor under its fur, landing another hit, I realized, it is so tough, his attack landed on a tree, turning it into bits. I thought, a direct punch would turn any bone to dust. With explosive power, fierce attack strength, high defense, and robust health, this F-grade boss is ridiculously strong, I thought. Based on the HP damage, he can afford dozens of mistakes, but I'm done in just one? I need to quickly find his weak point. 
I was confused when he got angry and uprooted a tree. Shocked, I exclaimed, pulling out a willow tree by its roots. This is literally a rabbit-shaped Luzhishin. The monster threw the tree at me. I used my ability, Solitary Sword of Nine Slashes, and cut the entire tree into pieces. The monster tried to punch me, and I thought, I'll go for his lower body for a change. Suddenly, a stone flew directly into his eyes, injuring him and decreasing his health by 20 points. Is that 20 normal damage? I wondered. Enraged, the monster punched me in the face, decreasing my health by 15 points. I got distracted, I exclaimed. Even though I deflected the punch towards my chin, it still caused 15 damage, I thought. He then threw another punch at my ribs, decreasing my health by 40 points. With a powerful punch, he launched me towards a tree, leaving me with only 5 health points remaining. I almost died again, the rabbit started running towards me, trying to pull me out of the tree trunk. As expected, he fell right into the trap, I thought as his hand got stuck in the vines. I called out, little rabbit, I'm here. Do you like the gift I prepared for you? This withered tree is full of entwining vines. Once entangled, it's hard to get out without shedding a layer of skin. The rabbit struggled to free his hand from the tree trunk. It's useless, unless you destroy the entire tree, I taunted, pointing my sword at him. You've got no chance now. I jumped from the tree, landing a critical hit on his eyes for 100 points. Clutching his eyes in pain, I thought, his eyes are indeed his weak spot, causing a whopping 100 critical damage. Then the system prompt stated, the big-eared rabbit is mad, with all powers increased by 50%. As he roared towards the sky, I said, what good is your attack power if you're blind? I landed critical hits with my sword, reducing his health to 38. I prepared myself for the final blow and successfully killed the monster with a critical hit of 38 points. I leveled up to 4. The loot from the monster lay before me. The loot included a breastplate and great magic 77, which could yield a certain amount of gold coins. Excitedly, I said, after putting on the armor, I feel a continuous surge of power. Feels like I could pick a fight. The system notified me that I had leveled up and earned 10 free attribute points to allocate. I looked at my status panel, thinking about how to allocate the 10 free points. I put all my points on strength. Attack power in the range of 11 to 16. The necromancer swordsman seems to have decent strength growth. 5 points of strength equate to 3 to 5 points of attack power, I said. I exclaimed with joy, haven't collected a single leg hair yet, time to strike again. Little bunnies, big brother is coming. I turned to the village chief. Village chief. How did I do on my task? Well done, young skeleton, he replied. Here's your reward, before me, some system quests appeared. Nice. Village chief, do you have any other tasks? I asked. Of course. Take on a new quest. A notice appeared stating, you have accepted the quest Green Manti, level, F rank medium. Quest details, head to Dawnlight Forest, kill 100 green mantises, collect 10 green mantis blades, and deliver them to the village chief. 100 of them? I need to find a merchant and buy some health potions for a prolonged battle, I thought. The village chief asked, are you looking for a merchant? Need to find a merchant and buy some health potions for a prolonged battle, I replied. He said, the night spirits are few in number, we value versatility over specialization. I then asked, village chief, how much is this magic stone worth? Not bad quality. 1540 copper coins, he replied. With joy, I imagine the money, thinking, the mission reward is only 10 copper coins, but this magic stone goes for 1540 copper coins straight up. As long as there's enough of them, even copper can shine like gold. Rubbing my hands, I asked, do you have any health potions here? Yes. Guaranteed satisfaction, he replied. The system prompt stated, basic health potion price, 50 copper coins. Effect, restores 80 horsepower per bottle. The chief added, little skeleton, feel free to come again. You swindler. Bought 20 bottles in one go and still no discount. In the dawnlight forest, I encountered a warning mad dragon head. Do not enter. Walking towards it, I said, mad dragon? Is that a guild? Do not enter. What's inside that could spook a skeleton? I saw some people and said, who are those two, they were running, and one of them shouted, big bro, they seem to be chasing us, the other replied, run fast. Confused, I said, the two tonight brothers. How could they be here? I was silently standing before them and they was saying with night spirit ahead and mad dragon behind heaven wants to doom me. 
One of them said big brother what should we do? They shouted let's fight it out tightly holding their weapons one of them said right let's fight. Together we can take on a mere level 5 knight spirit. Suddenly a arrow hit on his back he asked big brother, are you alright then another arrow was heading towards his head but I stopped it with my hand. He thanked me I said you guys go ahead. He was asking big brother are you okay he replied I'll live. I thought an archer. Interesting. The arrows were flying towards me and I was thinking the arrows are fast but their trajectory is too predictable. Running towards them and deflecting them one by one I thought with my current reaction speed you can't touch me at all. He was level 7 from Mad Dragon named Lil Huarong and preparing his another attack towards Shock he said he actually dodged them all using his ultimate move. He threw a wind ripping arrow slashing my sword I said your ultimate move is really and shouted hella weak. He was shocked saying he split it open. Again I thought so fast. How did he get behind me slashing my sword from his back I shouted farewell, little archer. I landed a critical hit decreasing his health by 135 points I said archers are as fragile as ever. I was hearing some sounds and said such a scene isn't something a novice player can cause. I thought could it be that the mad dragon guild is clearing the area to hunt a boss and said too bad I'm the one that slipped through the net. In the deep and dawnlight forest a man or a woman I don't know. Standing on a tree with her guild some bunch of monsters were before her. The monsters was level 15 the green mantis king and the monster was fighting with some peoples and the guy on the tree said brothers. We've already taken down half of the boss's health. Each brother who dies will be compensated 300 yuan and an additional 500 yuan for those who lose levels due to death the long herd man further continued saying 50 yuan for each drop in the boss's HP and that counts for previous strikes too. He was level 9 knight named roaming dragon shocked I thought 1200 drops of blood for 60,000. Has this big spender gone mad? Spending so much money on an F level boss. They launched towards the monster saying for the mad dragon guild take him down. Confused I thought is this the super high boost from the money buff? The monster was easily killing them rubbing machine I was thinking such terrifying damage numbers. This boss is way stronger than the big eared rabbit king. Can the remaining members of mad dragon guild hold out till the end? The white hired man said to them keep going don't stop. And they agreed with a mysterious smile I thought what kind of battlefield command is this? Too presumptuous. This mindless offense will also lead to heavy losses on their side. Is he planning to slowly grind down the boss with other people's lives? Boss's HP drop reward plus casualty compensation. He's throwing away 100,000 for the first kill of an F grade boss. Attacking the monster decreasing his health rapidly the remaining health of the monster was 416 points the archers started fire their arrows. The health of the monster started decreasing rapidly. And the remaining health of the monster was 60 points. With a creepy smile he shouted nice job archer squad. Stop attacking when the boss has just a sliver of health left, let me finish it off. I thought no wonder this kid is almost at level 10. He hogged 50% of the boss's final hit XP all to himself. Then suddenly the monster started transforming and everyone was confused. The system notice stated the green mantis king has gone mad with anger, growing 6 blade arms, with attack power increased by 100%, then the monster started attacking them with his new 6 blades from a sudden attack the remaining help of the monster was 18 points. He said to them keep going, don't stop and he thought he's almost out of HP. The remaining help of the monster was 3 points and they were both thinking that now is the time. He was going to attack the monster from his backside before the attack can land I blocked it he was shocked and then asked who are you. I replied I'm just an ordinary passerby. Just happened to pass by here, seeking justice for those players you violently expelled. Angrily he said speaking so righteously, but isn't your real goal just to snatch the first kill of the boss? I replied just here to cleanse the gaming environment I thought and collect the boss as compensation on the way. He threw his weapon towards me but before the weapon can reach me I grabbed the wing of the monster and dodged his attack then I attacked him from his backside and then landed a critical hit 250 points. I told him you should practice more, Master Dragon. Spending on power-ups leads nowhere. He was disappearing and shouting at me. I thought this guy will definitely bring back up after respawning, I need to hurry. Pink energy was emanating from my body and I said don't worry, it's almost your turn. Then I attacked the monster and killed it. I was very excited from the rewards and the experience. I was confused when a system prompt stated a warning your health is below the minimum threshold, you will be forced to log off, and the system will automatically save the XP and equipment you gained from defeating the boss. 
I took off my gaming helmet and said why did I suddenly get forced offline right after killing the boss? What did that warning mean? Someone was banking my door and I thought who's knocking in the middle of the night? I asked Shursan. What are you doing here? Shursan replied worried about you, what else? I said I've been messaging you and can't get through on the phone either. I was saying what on earth are you up to? He was shocked and very fat indeed when he was looking towards me he screamed zombie. I was confused repeating his words. Sure San handed me a phone and said see for yourself. I was glancing towards his phone screen. Shocked he shouted what are these patterns on my face? Sure San said these are liver mortis spots, typical of corpses, and they're visibly spreading and changing at an alarming rate. I said don't joke about this at 2 in the morning. It's just some kind of skin allergy, right? He replied if you don't believe me, I can take you to my dad's hospital to check it out, it's exactly like what's recorded in our forensic files. I fainted saying how could I possibly have such stuff on my face? My head it hurts so much. Sure San shouted hang in there dude. I'm taking you to the hospital right now. In the emergency room, people's hospital number 4. The doctor said it really is liver mortis. Sure San asked how's he doing dad? His dad replied it's hard to say for now let's start with a blood test and I'll arrange a PET CT scan. He shouted this is too bizarre to think such a thing could happen. In the hematology laboratory I asked Uncle Do. How did the blood tests turn out? He replied it's hard to draw a conclusion. This is an unprecedented disease. Your blood contains a giant virus that defies biological norms. He shouted a giant virus could it be that I'm infected with? A zombie virus? He further continued it's not that dramatic but the weird part is that it doesn't attack your healthy cells instead it repairs the damaged ones. He explained however, because you have too many damaged cells in your body, this objectively slows down the speed of your blood circulation. Slow down my blood circulation? He continued saying after all, liver mortis is caused by the cessation of blood circulation your current condition is due to slow blood flow causing some blood to accumulate on the surface of your skin. Shocked when I heard that moreover, your blood circulation is gradually slowing down, once the blood flow stops, you are very likely. He was thinking I might die from the stopping of blood circulation. Consoling me said don't lose heart. With medical technology so advanced these days, there must be a way. The PET CT is ready let's first check if this virus has other effects on your body. I thanked Uncle Du, the doctor was thinking these days some strange things were happening I said to the doctor I am alright he asked really nothing? In the CT room Shursan asked dad, do you suspect that Lu Chen's is hiding something? His dad replied I just want to confirm it he might genuinely not remember what happened to him. It's a kind of protective mechanism of the brain. Shursan asked are you suggesting that he has developed post-traumatic stress disorder and is forcing himself to forget certain things? His dad replied well done. Shursan, you've actually read some of the medical books at home. Then he continued explain judging by the rate of his blood circulation slow down. He must have suffered a severe trauma before and might even have died once. The situation doesn't look good we should notify his family immediately. Clutching his teeth from frustration he said how could this happen? I was laying down and my body was getting a skin as dad said to sure San I'll go get the films, you take him to the MRI room and I'll follow shortly. Walking out from the room he agreed then his dad heard a loud scream his dad was very angry and asking him what are you howling about in the hospital in the middle of the night. Sure San said to his dad look. My all cars on my body disappeared I exclaimed with joy the liver mortis is completely gone. How is that possible? Then he started asking me some bunch of question which I will not mention. He was touching my face and told me this is too strange. Your face looks normal. Hands look normal. Pupils are normal. Just with x-ray exposure. He was trying to be as far as possible from me and said the liver mortis has completely disappeared. Waving his hand he said quick bring over the blood drawing equipment no. Let's head to the lab now. Looking at him I was nervous and said uncle do, please calm down. Three hours later I was leaning on his shoulder and told sure San I feel like your dad was about to slice me up for a human body study at the end. Sure San said didn't expect my dad to draw 800 milliliters of your blood for experiments. He was offering me some drinking water while I was legend sitting on a couch and drinking the water. Looking towards my hands I thought Uncle Du said I've suffered a severe trauma, why don't I remember anything at all? Sure San arrived with some food and said Lu Chen, dude. A beauty in a sports car is arguing with the security guard at the entrance. I was asking him bandage beauty sports car? 
Sure San, did you take any photos? Sure San showed his cell phone to me and said I did, take a look. And said she's quite a beauty, but seems like the old guard isn't falling for it. I was thinking that's chief. I remember now some chains which were trying to lock up a door broke suddenly. I thought it's all coming back. My eyes were turning blue and I thought that night. After my first date with Chief. I died. And my inner shins broke apart all. Sure San asked dude what's wrong. I am saying that woman she's he. The Chief of Sword Spirit. Someone was begging the door and saying Lu Chen. I'm he. Shockingly he said you found my place so quick. Sure San asked me why do I feel like she's up to no good. What did you guys do last night? Sure San was walking towards the door and then was saying well since you know each other I'll go open the door and you can talk face to face. I am coming. I screamed Sure San. Wait. Don't open the door yet. And jumped towards him. He was confusingly looking towards me and I was raising my trembling hands and saying to him I need to tell you something. Someone was banging the door and saying Lu Chen. I know you're in there. Coming. Stop knocking. Sure San was going to open the door but before he can open the door I pushed him aside and she was confused and calling my name Sure San said hey beautiful, do you need something? She asked where's Lu Chen. I just heard his voice. Sure San replied Lu Chen doesn't live here. You must be mistaken. She was to search me and Sure San was trying to stop her insert she was going towards the door and opened it saying are you hiding from me, Lu Chen? I was thinking Sure San. Didn't I tell you to get rid of her? How did she get into the bedroom? She was standing before my wardroom and she was going to open it. Before she can open the door of the cupboard Sure San shouted Lu Chen is dead. For hands were trembling and she was saying it can't be. Sure San thought she stopped. Tears in her eyes she shouting that can't be. Lu Chen can't be dead. You're lying. Sure San replied it's true. If you don't believe me you can check the death certificate at the people's hospital number 4. She pushed Sure San aside and started running from there while crying. Sure San made a call and said dad I need some help. While opening the door he said dude she's gone. Is this really okay? I replied when I was in the hospital I naively thought that with x-ray treatment, my body would be just like a normal person's. But after the lock on my memories was broken, I'm not even sure if I'm really alive now. I further continued instead of giving Chief hope and then shattering it it's better to give her despair right away. That way it'll hurt less. Sure San said you're making me more and more confused. And asked what exactly happened last night. I replied I was buried alive. Sure San was shocked and I said yesterday afternoon, I went to meet Chief. I was remembering explaining to Sure San I thought it was just a normal meetup with an online friend. I didn't expect her to be E, the vice president of GGS Asia. A rich beauty. Weren't you and your chief game partners? You've landed yourself a sugar mama. Chief sold my in-game gear for 200,000 and invited me to join her newly formed student. She also expressed her feelings for me but I turned her down. Sure San was crying and said to me dude you really. I continued explaining with my 3 second lag, I'd only be a burden to her. I don't want her wasting time on someone as useless as me. On the way home she was giving me a ride then an accident happened. Her rival for the position of Asia Pacific president saw no hope of winning and set a trap on the way to take us down with him. They had a lot of people and were armed. In a desperate moment, I ignited the car's gas tank to save us. But the explosion only bought us a minute and I added I threw the chief, who was knocked out by the blast, onto a passing tractor and I stayed behind to deal with them. Shockingly he was looking towards me and I explained seeing their plan fail and their prey escaping, the furious killers took all their anger out on me. They hacked me until I was barely alive. Thinking I was dead after venting their rage, they dragged me to the mass grave in the north of the city. And that's how they buried me alive. With shock he repeated my words mass graveyard. Then I again started explaining luckily heavens looked out for me. Last night's heavy rain saved me the soil burying me became really loose because of the rain. Half conscious, I crawled out of the ground like a zombie I don't know how I started moving. I just felt the intense pain in my body gradually fading away and when I fully regained consciousness, I was already standing at my doorstep. Without any injuries only a faint pain at the back of my head. Sure San asked is it because you got infected with a giant virus after being buried, and the virus is constantly repairing your body. This is unbelievable. I replied Sure San, do you think I'm still considered alive? 
He said all the mysteries are hidden in the mass grave in the north of the city, it looks like we need to go there. I replied I'll go with you he was giving me his support while we were walking and he was saying you need to take a good rest now. He said eat, I'm heading out for a bit I asked are you going to the mass grave now? With a poker face he said no, it's about faking your death certificate. My dad almost yelled at me to death just now with confusion all over my face I was listening oh right. My dad asked me to bring your gaming helmet too. I was eating the meat jerky and said all right, take it with you. In the people's hospital number 4 expert conference room Shursan said dad, I'm here. He opened the door and saw some old men and thought why are all these grandmasters here. I was counting my income of gaming and saying it is not enough and I was writing on a paper my situations. Shursan was knocking on the door and said dude. I'm back, where are you? I asked at Shursan. I said coming I asked what's with all these bags. What are you up to? Are you running away from home? He replied while entering my room no. I'm moving in with you. With shock I said but I only have one bed? Sure San replied it's fine. Your couch is wide enough for me to sleep on. I asked Sure San be honest am I at the point where I need personal care? Laying on my couch Sure San said what are you thinking? I'm just too bored at home alone. Handing me a report Sure San said as for you you're not dying anytime soon. He explained this is your analysis report. It shows that your vital signs are good. I took out the papers and said no way. Sure Sen told I didn't believe it at first either, but then those old professors did several sets of comparative tests, and I believed it. I asked my situation was discovered? Sure Sen replied yeah. It was discovered. He said your virus gene sequencing project was too big. Dad needed help. More people got involved, with higher qualifications. In the end, top medical experts gathered. One call from them turned the mass graveyard into a military restricted area. Once these professors got involved, things moved fast. Excitedly he further continued saying in just half a day, the secrets of the graveyard were uncovered. I was shocked when I heard that. He further continued explaining underneath the graveyard is a burial site from the late Han dynasty. It might be related to Lord Guan Yu, but we need to dig further to out more. Fine I said this sounds kind of mysterious. He said there's something even more mysterious. With horror on my face he explained we found a virus in the leaked corpse fluid outside the tomb that has the same genes as the virus in your body. He handed me a paper and said isn't it written in the files? The Luch and Frozen Virus. It's even named after you. I was looking through the papers blushingly he said read on, I'll tidy up my stuff. I asked why do the virus characteristics only have a brief summary and no detailed content. Sure Sam was holding the figurines in my hands and told in less than a day, those big shots could only write a summary analysis report. The specific characteristics still need further research. Further added the only confirmed characteristic right now is its super strong regenerative ability. He explained your body, your physical condition is now ridiculously good. I said the virus has enhanced my physical condition, but it also slowed down blood flow and reducing my heart rate. I said compared to these physical issues, the most important thing is. I asked isn't anyone interested in my body? They found the virus was more valuable for research. Your importance dropped, and you became just a reference. I said, as long as I don't become a lab rat, I never imagined this virus helped me three times. Sure San told me three times? Wasn't it twice? I told Sure San repairing cells brought me back from the dead, being the virus host saved me from becoming a lab rat, and lastly, my brain's delay dropped to 0.9 seconds, he is back aside and shouted seriously. He took my gaming gear and told quick. Log in and show me, right, this thing can repair cells so it must be able to repair your brain nerves too. Such simple logic, how did I not think of that and said we can also test if the x-ray system dad installed works. While wearing the game gear I asked what is that? He explained simply put, your helmet can now emit an x-ray spectrum that inhibits the virus, so you don't have to go to the hospital every day for x-ray inhibition therapy. I said that's awesome. No more daily hospital trips, I can get treated at home. He showed me ring and said besides the helmet, there's also this thing. He put that ring on my wrist and I asked what's that? He explained vital monitoring wristband. It can monitor your vital signs. I asked monitoring wristband. Sure San, what's with this red line? When he saw my bracelet got red he was shocked. In the downstairs at Lu Chen's place were in the ambulance and a man said to me alright. I asked is it really okay now? That red line and electric shock won't suddenly appear again right? 
Sure Sam was depressed banking his head on the wall and the man said nope. If someone hadn't forgotten the basic rule of testing first, this accident wouldn't have happened. I replied uncle, sure Sam has been running about all day, it's understandable he forgot. Angrily he said this brat probably forgot how to use the wristband completely, let me explain it in detail again. Nervously I replied okay. He explained the wristband monitor's vital signs in real time. A black line means normal. A red line indicates a heart problem it will defibrillate you. A blue line shows a lung issue, it injects adrenaline. A green line signals a blood problem. I told depressed your sand, no wonder it started defibrillating when the red line appeared. What is his head forward he said don't panic if any lines appear, if you're in the city I'll be there within half an hour. If you need to leave the city, you have to inform us. I thought limiting travel to within the city. This is probably their biggest concession. Waving my hand I said take care, uncle. He replied contact us immediately if anything happens. I said to sleeping sure san oh my god. Finally gone. Uncle also helped me set up the x-ray system, I'm going to test it out. Sure san asked by the way. Dude, is your game ID still the same? I'll add you online in a bit. I asked changed it, what about you? We both said say it together. Then we both shouted fallen spear and ultimate master. Between us was an awkward silence. Leaving from there I said great name. Angrily sure san shouted am I not worthy? Speaking from the door I said you are. Hurry up and set up the console, I'm waiting for you. Ultimate master he threw sneakers towards me and told me get lost. With a side glance I said just wait, sure san, I, Lu Chen, will definitely make you a true ultimate master. Putting my game gear on I was thinking wasted quite a bit of time, wonder what my rank is now login. Login. Once the helmet starts, the x-ray system will also start. This feels so comfortable. The system informed me player Fallen Spear has obtained Jungle Green Blade. In the Dawnlight Forest I was checking my item description and I was thinking how did I end up in the Green Mantis's lair. Putting my hand forward I said looks like the disconnection coordinates were anchored to the Jungle Green Blade's location. Jumping forward towards the Newell's monster I said let's test out this sword's power. Sitting on a tree branch I said it pierced through the giant tree with just a light strike. I wonder what effect it will have on monsters. Before me Mantis level 8 monsters I was happy and said perfect timing. I attacked the monsters and made a critical hit of 402 points spinning my blade I said a critical hit of over 400, as expected from the black stone. I said putting my blade forward trying to ambush me. I punched the monster on the face and told him you're not qualified. While throwing it far slamming it into other monsters. I was standing before them and saying I'm in a hurry. With the red glowing eyes and my sword forward I said come at me all at once. All the level 8 monsters started attacking me confusingly I said they're really coming me all at once. I started chopping them into pieces with my lightning fast sword slashes and told then you'll die all at once. Wiping my sword I was thinking still as cool as ever but still a bit lacking compared to the previous. Suddenly someone shouted fallen spear who's calling me? The system notice informed me the undead judge a powerful spirit from the purgatory he has come to the world through a contract, strength unknown. I was confused thinking is this damn thing here to mess with me? He told me player fallen spear identity confirmed. He took out his brush and said commence judgment I thought what's going on? Moving his brush ink was flying all around the place and he threw the scroll towards me I was thinking what is this and it was a bounty note of me 250 gold coin for hunting me. My eyes were blazing with anger and I thought 250 gold coins. One gold coin is roughly equal to 100 bucks, so killing me once gets you 25 grand. I turned the notice into bits and shouted is he trying to use money to force me out of the game? Just you wait. Stomping my foot onto the notice I said let's see which one of us quits first. Then the system notice board informed me that the quest completion. I reached level 10 and I was now able to change my profession. I was jumping and said finally, I can change profession. Then a sister notice appeared before me stating player ultimate master has sent you a friend request. Do you accept? I thought sure san is online. I pressed on yes button. Sure san said dude, what's going om why are you being hunted again? I replied ran into some rich idiot. Hiding in a corner sure san said dude. You haven't changed profession yet, right? I replied nope. And asked what's up? Sure san informed me no wonder. A bunch of players who have completed their profession changes are treating you like a new- Confusingly I ask someone's coming already? 
sure Sen told me to check the public chat channel. I checked the world channel I am not gonna read that all if you want you can. I shouted these bastards really think I'm a noob. Sure Sen asked it looks like they're forming a team to hunt you down? What are you gonna do? I replied who in this world knows more about hunting than I do and said don't forget how I spent my last year in soul sorrow. Sure Sen said in the last year, people were coming at you as soon as you logged in. How did you manage to survive? I was clutching my bony hands and remembering giving people false information, playing dead, camouflaging as a beast, camouflaging as grass or stone, using clone eyed to infiltrate the enemies, hiding in a boss's nest for half a month with a shocked face Sure Sen said dude, you're a badass. Cryingly I replied that year I was forced to become a master of escape. It was all tears and hardship. I took a screenshot while saying now let me show you how the master of escape toys with them. And I send that photo to Shursan. I said to Shursan, spread this photo immediately and say I'm farming monsters in Dawnlight Forest. Shursan replied dude, are you trying to lure everyone to Dawnlight Forest? I told him exactly. Fake intel will make them swarm there while I take the chance to change profession. I started hiding my whole body with grass and said just basic escape tactics. I was completely and invisible on the grass and I told him to avoid being spotted on the way, I'll need to use some disguise. I'm heading out first. Everyone was checking my photo on world channel and particular man with a flower on his head said black tiger just sent a message. Confusingly he said fallen spear is in dawnlight forest, wanna go? The other one said of course, that's 25,000. The stone which was there to two pair of eyes with green light visible and two legs came out of the stone I started running while I was thinking finally left after crossing this wasteland, I should reach the icebound post the village chief mentioned. I thought once I reach what icebound post, I can change profession. That's night spirits territory. Human players will be automatically marked as hostile by night spirit NPCs. I was walking and debating in my mind but my gut tells me since Icebound Post's the only place for night spirits to change profession, Roaming Dragon must have stationed troops there but changing my profession is something I must do, and no one can stop me. Crossing this canyon will get me to Icebound Post. I was resting on the stone and thinking let's see how many enemies are around Icebound Post. If there are few, I'll take them head on and quickly take them out. If there are many, I'll create a diversion and sneak into Icebound Post amidst the chaos. In the Icebound Post level 12 archer said everything ahead is normal. Chewing on a blade of grass one particular person said got it, continue scouting. He was level 15 knight sea dragon demigod and he thought do we really need 4 of us to deal with someone who hasn't changed their profession? And a level 13 warrior named 3 horned dragon thought is our chief being too cautious? And there was also present a level 14 shield warrior named somewhere on Mount Tai. The archer girl shouted to everyone stay alert. They got all in the respective positions and shouted we've waited so long, he's finally here. I thought only four of them. Find the right moment and take them out in one go. I was standing before them and they shouted at me prepare to die, fallen spear. While playing with my finger I thought the only ones who can hurt me from this distance are archers. I need to find a way to get closer first. And asked why do we have to fight as soon as we meet? Can't we sit down and talk? And they all replied are you chickening out while approaching them I said you guys in the mad dragon guild are rich and powerful, it's not shameful for a little skeleton like me to admit defeat but can't you big shots let me go just this once? The archer was thinking 10 meters 8 more meters until you're within my attack range. One of them said letting you into icebound post to change profession? We're not that stupid master dragon has ordered. Kill fallen spear on sight. But considering your attitude. I told him big brother, leveling up isn't easy for any of us, why do this? He was thinking 5 meters. One of them said you think you can offend our mad dragon guild and get away with it? The archer was pointing his arrow towards me and thinking 3 meters I took sigh and said looks like I've really offended the wrong people. He replied the fact that you managed to evade the entire network's hunt and safely arrive here proves you're quite capable but compared to us you're still not good enough. Mockingly and he said mad dragon guild is full of hidden talents. Even I can only rank 10th within the guild. Holding back my laughter I asked you guys. I went over knees the archer was pointing his arrow towards me I was laughing and saying comparable to dancing flames. Some were confused and some were shaking with anger when they hold I saying truly, ignorance is fearless. Then one of them shouted how dare you mock the mad dragon guild. You're courting death. I said let's end this boring conversation here. I asked don't you know that those who talk too much die miserably? The archer shouted arrogant level 10 night spirit. 
He released his arrow towards me with a confused look one of them said bird's eye, wait. He was shocked when he saw attacking me and dealing a critical hit of 160 points. I said putting archers in the front row. Your team's lack of strategy is laughable. They were shouting their companion's name bird's eye and they were all shocked wiping my blood from my sword I said just because of a few words from the enemy. You just watch them stroll a hundred meters right up to you. I was marking them and I asked are you idiots? They shouted at me and one of them told everyone don't panic. We still have three people left. He's just a night spirit who hasn't changed profession. I was going to charge at them and one of them said spread out. Attack him from three sides. He attacked me I blocked his attack while they was surrounding me then suddenly I delivered a kick on his stomach and said I'm unbeatable in close combat. Then one girl tried to attack me from behind and I easily stopped her blade by my sword and the other one was going to attack me from behind again with a shield when the thought I was going to punch the shield I intentionally missed the punch and I thought the delay is reduced again first create some distance. While retreating I was watching they were going to get a kiss I made a love sign for them in the sky and I thought awesome. At this rate of nerve repair, I might be strong enough to fight dancing flames in two days. I said now let's test it on you guys first see how strong I am with a 0.7 second delay. Then the shield men knelt down I was confusingly looking at them he used wrath of the earth and I thought that's the tank's charging skill. Before he can complete a below lightning flash passed near him and I was able to get some critical hits the blade chewing man thought how is this possible. Our shield warrior got one shot. Then I attack at the girl dealing some critical hits and she lay down defeated. I was running towards him saying don't worry, it's your turn soon. Panickingly he said wait a second let's sit down and talk. I struck my sword on his head dealing a critical hit and said sorry blood was coming from his head and he was falling down and I said I don't have the habit of sitting down and talking with my opponents. I was walking through their dead bodies while saying the main force of mad dragon should be arriving soon, gotta move fast. He was response and was thinking that was close. He should be far away by now, right? Suddenly he heard my voice calling him from behind and shocked. I asked how did you revive on the spot? Did you secretly stash some revival potion? He replied nope. Bro, players above level 15 revive on the spot after dying. I'm exactly level 15, so. I thought revive on the spot. After level 15, I need to be extra careful. Getting camped at my respawn point is a huge hassle. Extra carefully he asked bro I've explained everything clearly, can I go now? Mockingly I asked weren't you super arrogant before? Why are you so timid now? While getting hits on his head he replied we lost a 4v1 you're just too strong we can't beat you. Suddenly call Papad out from his guild and he thought why does it have to be now? While I was not paying attention he tried to cut the call. While pressing on connect the call I asked why aren't you answering the call? Nervously he said hello master dragon. He shouted from the other end I got the coordinates you sent. Stall him for a bit, I'm almost there. This time we'll make sure he quits the game. I shouted roaming dragon. You guys are like a persistent rash. And he was shocked when he wrote my voice from other end. I started cursing and shouting at them and he got extremely angry. I shouted now I'll kill sea dragon first as a sacrifice. Cryingly he said bro, if I die again I'll be back to level 14. It's not easy for us to level up and he was begging him for the help. From the other end he shouted try touching him and see what happens. Everyone was shocked when the system notes stated call interrupted player C Dragon Demigod was killed. Greeting Teeth said to everyone let's kill him. In the icebound post's outer perimeter I was standing on a tree. I noticed something was coming and then I get got hit by a weapon from behind. Everyone started shooting their arrows and he was very excited and all the arrows were hitting the tree destroyed it. Happily he was saying this is what happens when you mess with mad dragons. Then some red system windows started appearing before everyone and everyone got confused. He took his head down and said humans you're getting bolder and bolder bold enough to attack Captain Fack. And he was captain of Night Spirit Patrol and continued you even ruined the new clothes my little skeleton brother gave me. He was standing on the branch of a tree preparing his attack while everyone was frightened and some were shocked and some were running from there. Angrily he said trying to run. Wishful thinking. Then head skeleton started emerging from the ground attacking everyone. He ordered them to kill everyone. While he was going to attack the guilt leader. Panickingly he said quick call for backup. Red film coming out of his one eye he taunted backup sure. 
Benny struck him on the head by his bone club and said just killing a few of you isn't enough to calm my anger and the other skeletons were killing his guild members one by one. He shouted make these human scum drop back to level 14. I was speaking from afar and said my plan was a great success. I was remembering how I bought the 10 sets of clothes from the village chief and how I was buttering the captain fac and I brought him a gift the same set of the clothes like me and I asked him can can I took a picture and he was sitting on the same tree and I was saying with there for a moment. I said I hope the mad dragons will behave for a while after this. Then some bunch of pop-ups of system appeared before me and confusingly I thought the bounty notice has been updated. The system prompted inform at me that if anyone kills me or cause me a drop from my level he will get 500 gold angrily I said great. The bounty has increased again. Walking up from there I thought roaming dragon, spend your money lavishly. That way, more experts will come to challenge me and these experts will all become stepping stones on my path to the top. I was confusingly thinking where is this place. I was deep in icebound post I thought he must be the necromancer swordsman Suluan that the village chief mentioned. He asked vermin why do you trespass on my territory? I replied master. I'm here to change profession. Pointing his blade forward he shouted prepare to die. I thought I can't dodge it. I took a letter forward and charger this is the village chief's letter of introduction. Reading the letter he said a letter from my old friend Nylon. Nervously I thought that was close. Almost got killed why are these NPCs so scary? He said kid, Nylon spoke highly of you in his letter, saying you're quite despicable. I shall follow my old friend's advice and take you as my disciple. Remember, as a necromancer swordsman, we must have the filthiest body and mind and I was nodding my head then shouted master. I'll remember that. He put his hand on my forehead and told me before changing profession, I need to awaken your talent. Then he started changing my profession and said descendant of the undead, awaken your unique talent. Pink energy started eliminating from my body and a system prompt to inform me you have successfully acquired the talent necromantic power, he said kid your potential is impressive. You've awakened the highest quality necromantic power now I grant you the qualification to become a necromancer swordsman. Releasing his sword he shouted in the name of Azura, I slaughter the spirits of all realms. Then I added with my knight spirit body I welcome the power of Azura. I thought my body is being taken over. This is so embarrassing. Then some believe energy entered my body. I said I can move freely now and asked is the profession change complete. Then some system prompt informal me of my profession change of necromancer swordsmanship. I was checking my panel and said all around enhancement. I feel my body is full of power now but why am I still a skeleton after changing profession? He told me the path of Azura is long and arduous being a skeleton is our true nature the path of Azura is long and arduous being a skeleton is our true nature kid, I see you have extraordinary qualities. Here are three skill books to help you grow quickly. He put three skill books forward and I was amazed he said skill books are priceless treasures. I see we are fated as teacher and student so I'll just charge you a little money. I asked you want money? He replied one skill book for five silver coins. Cash or card? Cryingly I was giving him the money and said I took on quests and fought bosses, risking my life to save up 24 silver coins, and you're asking for more than half of it. While trying to hold the money I asked master, I'm your student, can't you give me a discount? He said stop whining. The price is already very cheap. He said hand it over and snatched the money from my hands and I was crying he biting the coins he said kid my skill book is definitely worth it. I'm already selling at a loss. And I was silently reading them I thought how does this not look like I got scammed. I commanded skill book open some bunch of throat information appeared before me which I am not going to the and I thought basic swordsmanship and execution blade increased my damage by another 15%. After changing profession, I've already got a 20% damage boost. Looking over my state window I said the necromancer swordsman profession is truly badass. He was counting the money I confusingly asked master, the best way to test skills is through battle. Do you have any tasks for me? He replied you're a greedy kid I like it. He throw a scroll towards me and said complete the task above and clear out those skeletons who have sided with humans and I received a request to kill 50 lowly skeleton soldier. Leaving from there I said don't worry, master. I promise I'll complete this quest. In the great cemetery a skeleton hand was playing with some skeleton dogs by offering them a bone and he was level 12 then suddenly I came slash and got a critical hit on him and said the attack after changing profession is really strong a one hit kill. Energy started rising from the dead skeleton and it was flying towards me. 
Confusingly I was trying to slash the energy I was astonished when I noticed it has no physical body. The energy hit and the energy got absorbed into my body. But it just feels good for a bit. No experience gain, no attribute boost. I'll check the forum for more details later now. I touched the soldier and used death grasp. I thought what treasure will I get? I'm so excited. I got nothing but tattered rag and its value is none that's one broke dude. What a letdown. Keep grinding, there's no way all the skeleton soldiers are this broke. A skeleton was running from me I was chasing him and going to land attack but he blocked my attack. He attacked and threw me afar using whirlwind blade. I again jumped towards him and put my sword forward to attack him and his health point dropped by 190 points with my slash and I completed the quest now I was level 11. Already got 49 pieces of tattered rag, one more death grab won't hurt. Then I got a magic stone by extension a small magic stone, definitely better than a torn rag. I looked around and said but is this still the great cemetery? In the great cemetery green bone graveyard the tombstones here are so tall. Before you was a level 15 green bone skeleton. Shocked I said it's huge. Is it a mini boss looking down he said where did this little skeleton brat come from, daring to cause trouble on our turf? Then we started fighting and he died easily. This guy feels even easier to deal with than the skeleton soldiers. Low combat power, team battles, group actions. Could this guy be a scout? If that's the case. A weapon was flying towards me jumping away I said I've stirred up a hornet's nest. I noticed some more monster coming at me they attacked me all at once but I easily blocked their attack and I thought really strong. But you're still far from it and I jumped from their hold I kicked them that most weapon has started coming my way but I was able to dodge them then I noticed more and more monsters were coming out this is way too many. I thought big tombstone, I'm borrowing you for a bit. I slashed a tombstone and kicked it towards them the stone was going to fall on them and they started running and some of them got stuck under on the stones done. Let's get out of here while it's chaotic. I noticed an powering overpowering aura and shouted the boss is here. Everyone was calling him lord and he easily lifted the big stone by his power. Who are you? How dare you harm my people? And I was silent then he commanded seize him for me and I got surrounded by all sides. Raising his one finger and using his powers he said die, vermin. He was undead lord Ching you the system give me a warning the system detects that you currently cannot defeat this strong enemy please retreat immediately. Unable to view level, the undead lord's level is at least 20 levels higher than mine. I must escape, but now I'm surrounded by layers of green bone skeletons. Escaping is as hard as climbing to the sky. It's coming. I couldn't even cut through that skull with my execution blade and this guy just crushed it with a single step. He shouted accept your fate, vermin. I thought what terrifying power. He was working towards me and then lifted a huge stone and I thought this should work be the direction of Icebound Post. He asked any last words? I showed him the universal gesture and said who are you trying to scare with that broken tombstone? And calling yourself Lord? If you've got the guts, smash me with it. When he saw that he was speechless and angry. Vermin. You'll pay for your arrogance and shout to die. Just as I thought, he fell for it. I inserted my sword into a stone while flying I said to the monsters goodbye and they were all confused I easily escaped from there. He was shaking from anger and shouted what are you standing around for? Chase him. And they all agreed. Somewhere in the great cemetery there was written thanks to the undead lord for the big tombstone. Thanks to my friends. The writing is pretty good the drawing is quite vivid too and the heart is nice. A bunch of idiots. So many of you and he still got away. My lord, calm down. Track him, find him, kill him. In the icebound post. Master, the skeleton fingers you wanted. They're all here. I completed my quest well done, accept your reward. The system and forward me skeleton finger gained 1200 experience and reached his level to 12 and I got very happy. I was looking towards my state's window and said finally got new gear, one step closer to being fully equipped. Attributes have also improved a lot, although I can't fight the undead lord yet, I can level up by fighting green bone skeletons first. You encountered green bone skeletons and the undead lord? Yeah, if it weren't for my quick thinking, I almost didn't make it back. Kid, since you've already encountered the undead lord, this quest is yours. Recently the undead lord in the great cemetery is preparing to gather a large number of skeletons to attack icebound post, we need to strike first. Then I received another question from him which I am not gonna read if you want it's here. Although the quest rewards are generous. 
the Skeleton Finger Quest is grade F superior while Qingyu is directly grade E superior, a whole grade higher. Fortune favors the bold, as long as the Undead Lord doesn't absorb your soul fire, you'll be fine. Master, what exactly is this soul fire? Soul fire is the life essence of the Undead race. The Night Spirits have four major clans that jointly rule over all Night Spirits. The largest in number is the Undead Clan. The strongest in physical prowess are the Corpse Demons. The Dark Elves who control advanced magic. Lastly the elusive Ghost Clan immune to physical damage. Large in number? Why do I feel like our Undead Clan is kind of low tier? Among the four major clans, only the Undead can absorb Soul Fire for infinite evolution. We are the strongest Night Spirits. I was thinking infinite evolution the undead clan is truly domineering and said what happens if your soul fire gets absorbed you fall into dark hell and are erased from this world. I thought erased from the world. Does that mean getting deleted? He shouted this is the essence of our undead clan either get absorbed and die or absorb others to evolve. Undead general undead lord undead king finally becoming an existence comparable to the gods. An existence comparable to the gods? The absolute ruler of the undead, the Night Spirit King. He is Azura. The path of Azura is the continuous evolution of the undead bearing glory. It's no longer possible for me, but you have awakened a unique necromantic power. You will definitely succeed in the future, keep at it, kid. Master, I'm going to hunt the green bone skeleton. Be careful, kid, you are the hope of our undead. And my hope too. In the outer perimeter of the green bone graveyard some level 15 were walking a communication crow said it's always calling upwards, is there something else up there? Don't be silly. The tombstone is so high, how could anyone be up there? Yeah, right. How could anyone be up there? It's probably just another bird. That was close. Almost got discovered. Change location and continue scouting. Spent half an hour, finally figured out the situation. There are eight patrol squads on the outer perimeter of the Green Bone Graveyard. Each squad has five members and a communication crow for contact, I must kill the crow first to cut off their support. The most troublesome thing is. Every ten minutes, two squads will meet once. Take out two squads within ten minutes, and to avoid detection, take out the next two squads every ten minutes. What a challenge. The monster's walking towards us and I shouted start the timer. Who's there? I killed the bird and they were amazed by my speed then I attacked one of them on the head and jumped forward while they were shouting enemy has attacked us then I brought forward and everyone was frightened one of them tried to attack me by his huge club but I easily counter his attack and made some more sword slashes dealing a huge damage. I'm too slow. Faster, I need to be faster. Only one skeleton finger, the drop rate is so low and my timer was at 1 minute 40 seconds and some milliseconds. Almost 2 minutes, no time to use death grasp. At my speed, I'll encounter the second squad in 7 minutes. Finish the next battle in 1 minute? What a challenge. Some monsters saying how could this happen? All 8 squads are wiped out. If it weren't for the shift change, no one would have noticed. Should we report this to our lord? Today's escape by that guy has already enraged our lord. If he finds out about this he will be completely disappointed in us. Understand? Yes understood double the patrols and triple the personnel, with each squad equipped with four communication crows. Expand the search area, we must catch him. In the living cemetery I was sitting on a rock and looking towards the system and saying all 40 green bone skeleton squads on the outer perimeter are slaughtered, but I'm still far from completing the quest, gotta venture deeper into the green bone graveyard to hunt. But after killing 40 of them, I got to level 13. Completing this quest should get me to level 15. I wonder what rank I'll be now. System was showing me a range list which I have not going to read. Gaguzi, level 18 and way ahead of everyone else. Must be a leveling maniac. What rank can I get at level 13? I saw my ranking and I was react 125 I was always in the top 100 in soul sorrow. Here, I'm only 125th. Unacceptable, gotta get to the top 100 first. Level 18 Necromancer Knight Gaguzi was walking towards me in the rainy night. I said my bounty notice. He replied my 50,000 buck bounty, I've been looking for you. Didn't expect to run into you like this. The bounty on my head isn't easy to get. That's better. If you're too weak, it's no fun. 
he put his long weapon forward and charged his attack towards me but I was able to dodge that attack and made slash decreasing his health by 10 points then he hit me and my health went down by 9 points and I was thrown aside. I thought his reaction speed is slightly slower than mine, but his defense is really tough is at the necromancer knight's advantage. He was preparing a next attack I gripped my sword hard and I thought here we go. Our weapon is collided with each other shocked he thought his timing is perfect he deflected the spear in an instant. I raised my so what to attack him and made a slash using execution blade decreasing his health by 90 points as he gripped his weapon tight and launched towards me using technique stabbing hellfire I said him not bad but before I can do anything my whole body started trembling with pain and my head started hurting and I took a message hit from him I was confused and thought what just happened. My head felt as if it exploded. He jumped and attacked me but I was able to block his attack but my weapon fell down from my hands and I was trying to reach out but he made a hit decreasing my health by 20 points. I was thinking in my head I'm going to lose he made an attack towards me and I was thinking it is too late then my body got sent for away crashing into the stones. He said easy finish. I said how is this possible I actually blocked it. He was shocked and said you're still alive? He said perfect, you're not dead and ordered turn on the recorder. Only recorded kills count for the bounty, I almost forgot next what are you doing? The leaf was falling down in the rain then I made some sword slashes confusingly he asked cutting a falling leaf. Then it got cut perfectly I was laughing and said just as I thought. The severe headache is because my delay suddenly decreased by 0.5 seconds. What a nostalgic feeling. A 0.2 second delay. With the evil look I said now there's a perfect test subject. First place let's continue in the second half. He replied look at you being so arrogant without even a weapon.